Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Nick Cage Fight Podcast. Or if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome to the Nick Cage Fight Podcast, where we are occasionally reminded that a goofy creative idea where you watch a bunch of movies, a lot of which are directed DVD, sometimes contain a just diamond in the rough, hidden gem, <laughs> amazingly entertaining film. Like the one we are here to review today. I'm one of your hosts, Josh, joined as always by Rich and Ryan. How are we feeling today? This well, movie I've... had no right being as good as it was. And I've escaped hell with the devil's gun. Correct and correct. We are here today to talk about the 2011 film Drive Angry, which is rated R correctly. And For rad class- shit. <laughs> <laughs> and clocks in at an hour and 44 minutes you know we like our tight 90s here but this movie could have gone on for quite a bit longer and i would not have been mad they they could have given us another 15 minutes and i would have not Easy. complained oh, e- easily honestly <laughs> yeah they they could have given us a satan scene and i would have been like yeah this is fucking great i think they were setting up for it for a sequel that never got made because nobody saw this that's a shame. That's a damn shame. Yeah, no, absolutely. That that's that's a sin. I would watch. I would go. We would go to the theaters for a sequel to this one. <laughs> oh, I would if they put out one of these a year. I'd be in the fucking uh, theater for it every yeah, make, time. Yeah, make this the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, I'd be down for that. All right, all right. So let's hop right into housekeeping because I'm excited not only to talk about housekeeping, but I really want to get to this plot. So. First up, we have the director, one uh, Patrick uh, Lucier. I'm going to make an assumption. He he is Canadian, so yeah, uh, I think okay. we can go with that. I was going to say we're in America, so it's probably Lucier, but no, if he's Canadian, <laughs> yeah, you, you got to put that stink at the end. Yeah, he was born in Vancouver. All right, so yeah, Lucier, <laughs> who has directed a number of things, which this intrigued me when I first saw it, because uh, they're not necessarily great films or, or television shows, but they're mostly entertaining so we have dracula 2000 which i've uh, never seen but in just like clicking through his stuff i kind of really want to see it now because apparently dracula is judas yes yeah and he's gerard butler it's it's kind of bad but it's fun it's a fun watch and christopher Plummer plays a pretty good van helsing in it also dracula 3 legacy which i think is a sequel to dracula 2000 i think he, he did Dracula 2000, and then he did the prequel Dracula 2, and the sequel to the prequel Dracula 3. <laughs> uh, he also did White Noise to the Light. Which uh, I gotta hunt down, because I really like White Noise. Yeah, I didn't hate White Noise, but I don't... Not, not the adaptation of the Don DeLillo novel with fucking Kylo Ren from this year, the other White Noise about, yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. listening to ghosts on the radio. Yes, yes. correct. Uh, but he also did uh, My Bloody Valentine and did, uh, I can't remember if it was the, he was the series director, or if he did a couple episodes, Scream and the Purge TV shows. So he did I one episode. I didn't know there was a Purge TV show. Uh, he yeah. did one episode of each. He's also a, well, at least was a prolific editor. Hmm. Um, He edited 16 episodes of MacGyver. Yeah, I noticed uh, that he had a, a long editing credit, and he actually edited this movie too, which is not very common for directors to also do editing. Yeah, this was this was his second to last movie he edited, uh, next to Apollo eighteen, but he also edited uh, D three, The Mighty Ducks. Oh shit! I fucking which, love you, D three. Huh. Which I mean is the worst Mighty Ducks, but is definitely a mid movie. So yeah, I mean even the worst of the Mighty Ducks is better than the best of like Twilight. <laughs> oh yes, I would much rather watch D three than any Twilight movie. Oh my, my fiance is gonna hit you both next time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's jump directly into the writers from here. First up, we have uh, Patrick Lucier again, who wrote Dracula two thousand, Dracula three Legacy, and Terminator Genesis. Sure yeah, did. I saw that. It's not a great Terminator movie, but nah, it's, not it's all right. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but also with a writing credit is uh, Todd Farmer, uh, who also appears as an actor in this film. Uh, but Todd Farmer did work on Jason X, My Bloody Valentine, 
and I had to throw this in there, Heavenly Sword. Yeah, I saw that. I like yeah. that game. It's, it's a pretty good button masher, like character yeah. action joint. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it's I, like uh, slightly worse than the worst Devil May Cry game, which still makes it a pretty good game. Yeah, yeah. And they it's, they both worked on the movie Trick, which was like a new like a new age slasher film. So it seems like they kind of work together, not a lot, but a decent amount, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So jumping into the cast, and I know I'm going to get yelled at for a couple of glaring omissions here. Uh there's less to talk about than I than you th- you may think on this one. Yeah, I, there's like there's four big ones. I feel. I, I yeah. Got, I'm not going to lie. I got tunnel vision and I left out a side creepy character, but he's been in a ton of shit. So I'm, I'm going to toss him. Is it Jack movie. McGee? The guy that it plays Fat It is percent <laughs> Jack McGee. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I do. I do got to talk about that man for a second or two. <laughs> yeah, he plays Fat Lou. He does yeah. play Fat Lou. So to start off and as I start, well, yeah, as I start naming the characters, you're going to realize that one thing this movie doesn't do is fucking subtlety. Um, <laughs> so first up, man of the hour every hour, we have Nick Cage as Milton. Hmm. John Milton. John Milton specifically. <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal name. Next up, we have we have Amber Heard as Piper, who fucking killed it in this film. Straight up. Just yeah, she was pretty out. good. I mean, she, can you legally say the words Amber Heard and killed in the same sentence anymore? Yeah. Not if your name's Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah, he's not allowed to. <laughs> but no, she, she did phenomenally. And to call out some of her CV here, we have, uh, I, I always will put it at the front of the list because it's one of my personal favorite movies because of uh, reasons. Uh, she was an alpha dog uh, very, very briefly. But some other roles that that stood out, she was in All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. Uh, She was in Pineapple Express, which I had forgotten. Zombieland, The Ward, and most recently Aquaman, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, she was also in Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Oh, Um, yeah. I like that show just because the soundtrack rules. Well, no, she's she's in the movie, Friday Night Uh, Lights. Did the movie also have a soundtrack by Explosions in the Sky? Yes, it did, and it f- was sick. fucking awesome. I fucking love Explosions in the Sky. And that's why I like that show. <laughs> um, next up, I have Billy Burke as Jonah King. Billy Burke's been in a couple of things, but the primary ones I recognize were the Twilight films, and he did the voice of Commissioner Gordon for the animated feature of one of my favorite Batman comic runs, The Long Halloween. I wish they went weirder with the animation on that because that Tim Sale art really fucking sells that uh, graphic novel. Yeah, it's honestly, it's a shame because I love the comic books and the the animated feature kind of lost me. Yeah, it's it's like, it's just WB animated house style. It doesn't do oh. anything interesting. Yeah. yeah I, I, I haven't seen it yet, but um, he was also the best part of a middling TV show that should have been so much better than it was called Revolution. We were just talking about this before we were recording. Uh, check it out if you can find it. Like, it's interesting. It just doesn't do its premise well, but he's very good in it. And the one thing I recognize him from is a uh, Jim Abrams comedy film from the 90s, Mafia! Exclamation mark. Originally titled Jane Austen's Mafia, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. <laughs> Oh, that would have been so much better. There, it's, there must have been some, uh, some IP. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's just a parody of The Godfather, like a paint by numbers parody of The Godfather. It's got a couple of good bits in it, but you know, it's, all right. it's got more than a couple. I, I actually, when I was younger, I watched the shit out of that movie. I fucking yeah, that is it. a that was a frequent rental in my household as well. I always did get cracked up by the uh, the big fucking Vegas sign that says. Uh, Mob bosses and hitmen welcome. <laughs> or like uh, the uh, the fucking casino car bombing sequence in that is so good. That's wait, good. Wait, wait. Um, this is when, the one when with what's Jay Moore in it, right? Yes, yes this it is. The one with Jay Moore. Oh, yes. I'm familiar with that one. Yeah. Wait, isn't that the one where Dom DeLuise plays Marlon Brando and he has he constantly has a bunch of shit in his mouth that he's yes. pulling out? That's yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, th- there's that. It, it has Christina Applegate um, throwing things at a wall, which is the oh, yeah. I, I, 
I believe is the first. The, what, what, this is why we can't, we can't have, have nice things. 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 Yes. Yeah, that, that I think that was the first use of that meme. <laughs> Could be. Uh -huh. uh, I think we might be thinking of something else with Dom DeLuise because it's Lloyd Bridges plays the uh, the Vito Corleone. Oh, so D Dom, I was wait, Dom DeLuise. The Dom DeLuise one was in The Godson. The I, Godson. I, no, wait, didn't Rodney Dangerfield play like the main? I think Dom now, DeLuise right, was in. It was, now, was, it was in the, the Godson. Godson. It was the Godson. <laughs> right, but uh, but it, but he was not the um the Marlon Brando character. That no, was, was Rodney He's Dangerfield. Listening. No, DeLuise was. He's the Odd Father. Yeah. In in uh, Godson, uh, Roddy Dangerfield plays a character called the Rod Father. <laughs> okay, okay, that's why I was getting the two confused. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that, uh, that which was is a also a. Yeah, there was a cottage industry for Godfather parodies yeah, in the nineties. I can think of at least one more. The one where they do it with thumbs. They just draw thumbs on face, uh, faces on faces thumbs. on thumbs. It's called the Thumb yeah. Father. It is called the Thumb Father. <laughs> yeah, that was when they were doing like Thumb Wars, and they they had all these thumb movies. Uh, Thumbo First Blood. <laughs> I remember that one being pretty right. good. <laughs> all right, so we're completely off the rails now. Yeah, let's just talk next about up. let's let's just talk about the Godson for the next two hours. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, if let's we just wanted... talk about spoofs of The Godfather from here on out. Um, <laughs> we have at least three episodes. Listen, for any other movie, for like the last run of listen, movies, listen, the did, connection is there. <laughs> it is. Um, next up, we have uh, David Morse as Webster. Hmm, another interesting name choice. Uh, who is uh, known for his roles in The Green Mile, The Hurt Locker, World War Z, Contact, Horns. And my personal favorite, Twelve Monkeys. Oh, you left out the Cage Connection, The Rock, baby. I yeah, I I know. I it wasn't necessarily a, a a conscious effort on my part, but the more we don't land on any of the Holy Trinities, the more I'm getting superstitious about it. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way I can describe my my feelings with it because uh, you know we already take two episodes to cover these films. And the Holy Trinity is is going to be like probably a couple weeks per film yeah. to get through. So I, I got two movies I'm going to shout out for this dude. He's in a yeah. movie my mom loves called The Good Son with uh, Macaulay Culkin, where Macaulay Culkin just plays a total bastard of a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's also in a movie called The Long Kiss Goodnight. About, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, where Samuel L. Jackson and uh, Gina Davis plays this like former top secret spy lady who has had amnesia for like eight years and she slowly starts remembering that she's good at kill. I remember that movie whipping ass. Am I remembering it does that whip movie ass. Okay, no, you're, right. you're remembering that correctly. Cool. That movie is so good. <laughs> that was like one of the first R rated movies I wanted to see as a little kid, but my mom wouldn't let me. <laughs> it does have some serious TNA. I gotta say. <laughs> um, Next up on my list, I have what I considered now I've I've got to do a deep dive on 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 this woman's uh, career because this is incredibly intriguing to me. But uh, Krista Campbell plays Mona in this film. There, we have a Cage connection. She was in the Nick Cage Wicker Man film, which is also one of my favorite films. Then she was in she was in Malibu's Most Wanted and The New Guy. And one of the things those are two movies I used to get confused all the fucking time. Because they're structurally <laughs> the same film. Wait, wait, which which one in the new guy? Malibu's, Malibu's most, most wanted. wanted. Oh, they're like, yeah, they're, okay. They're mirror images of each other. It, it was a it was like a 90s genre type thing that I think died out in the early aughts. Yeah, like that um, yeah, like they were the PG 13 versions of like Road Trip and American Pie. Yeah. 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 I do fuck with Road Trip. Fucking okay, Malibu's Most Wanted does have a pretty good uh, line about uh, how are you going to wake up dead? <laughs> but so she started acting in like the mid 90s and her her, her early acting um, forays were like were like like Skinamax segments, you know, like those. She was in all things. that, too. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> she was in all that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then. She started getting like, uh, like side characters, like ancillary characters in like bigger films, and then just started producing and getting like executive producer credits in like 2011, 
with a run of not insignificant films. Uh, probably the most recognizable recent one was the 2019 Hellboy. She did two Texas Chainsaw Massacre films in more recent memory. Um, the Hitman's Bodyguard, the taking of Deborah Logan, like like shit that you've seen. She's been an executive producer on. It's funny that you say that because I haven't seen any of those movies you listed. Really? <laughs> Not a single one. Oh, she was a producer for Rambo Last Blood, too. I yeah. did see that one. I fucking love me a Rambo. <laughs> okay, so there you go. All right. So it does apply to you, too. It does apply to me, too. There you go. Next up, we have we have Katie Mixon as Norma Jean. I I recognize her from a couple of things. Two of I mean, my favorite. It's shows. Eastbound and Down. Yeah, that's the only thing I remember her from. Was Eastbound down, and Down. Yeah, hundred percent. That's the first thing I saw her in. But she was also in Wilfred, and then she was recently. Oh shit, she was. Yeah, she was recently in a film. I can't remember. I don't think it came out exclusively on Netflix, but that's where I ended up seeing it called Hell or High Water. That was actually the last thing she was in. Is that? Well, I mean, outside of like television, that was the last film she was in. Yeah, that was that was the one with with Ben Foster was in that, right? Yes. Oh, no, didn't see it. I I love me some Ben Foster. Uh, uh, Rewind a little bit to hear about my love of Alpha Dog, which also stars Ben Foster in one of his best roles. And she was also in Four Christmases, which was not something I saw, but it was big enough to include. And then, oh, I actually totally skipped over our her next entry uh, higher up in the list was uh, William Fitchner as the accountant who was in Crash, Armageddon, Black Hawk Down, The Dark Knight, Blades of Glory, a bunch of shit. He's, he's been the older in gentleman fucking... with the very prominent cheekbones. Yeah, he's yeah, been in fucking I got a couple everything. shout outs for him. He's in Strange Days, which is a Catherine Bigelow uh, like cyberpunk movie I really like. He's in Go, which is a pretty good movie with a very young uh, Timothy Oliphant in it. Uh, he's also in Equilibrium, which is an action movie that whips every single ass it possibly can. Yeah, Equilibrium rocked. <laughs> He was in Blades Equilibrium of Glory. is like a top 10 action movie for me, <laughs> unqualified. Um, That's about it. Oh, and Heat. He's also in Heat, which oh, is like one of my one of my favorite crime thrillers. So next up, uh, we have Pruitt Taylor Vince as Roy, who's been in Identity, Constantine, Angel Heart, Bird Box, Gotti, and The Devil's Candy. One of the I was gonna correct you, but they do actually pronounce it Constantine in that movie. It is it's technically pronounced Constantine like wine. Huh. But the movie they since say it's America, they do like, say Constantine. Mm-hmm. 90 times in that movie. Yeah, no, but in the comic book, it's like a running bit that he co- corrects people that it's constant time. Gotcha. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> and then last but not least, not going to leave him off the list, we got Jack McGee as, what was his character's name? Fat Lou? Uh, Fat Lou. <laughs> Fat, Fat Lou, whose first, uh, whose first acting credit, uh, which I always find this movie fucking... I've never seen it, but Turk 182, because people were like, that's where Blink 182 got their name from. They watched this <laughs> shitty movie called Turk 182. That's fucking funny. He's also yeah. in The Hidden, which is a movie I've gushed about before. Oh, the Fighter, Moneyball, Basic Instinct. The man has 223 acting credits. Oh, he was in House 3, the horror show? That's like the worst house movie. I'm 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 just gonna say with that number of acting credits, we might have to have a spin-off podcast about him called McGee and Me. He's in one episode of Twin Peaks. <laughs> How did I not notice that? He's oh. a bartender. Oh, now I feel bad because I om- I try and always throw in a Twin Peaks connection when I, I mean, can. There's really almost ride. always one. <laughs> oh shit, he was in Showgirls? That movie's trash. <laughs> oh, he was in an episode of It's Always Sunny. He Does was. he play a cop? Wait. He plays a yeah. cop in like most of these like one off episodes. I'm saying. Yeah, he 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 played a cop. He was in the uh, episode making Dennis Reynolds a murderer. Oh shit! He was in Coyote oh, Ugly, yeah. the worst version. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Holy shit! <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, the tracks. Fuck. There you go. Yeah, couldn't have left him <laughs> off the fucking list. No, you couldn't. This man's a heavy hitter. Heavy hitter. <laughs> All right, and that. That is where my housekeeping. He was in the TV series of the Magnificent Seven, which was so awful. I didn't know they made one of those. (laughs) Because it was bad. It was real bad. 
I believe it. I mean, like, I don't particularly like the Magnificent Seven anyway. I think Seven Samurai is the better of the two movies. It's a better. It it's way better. Um, the yeah. original Magnificent Seven, I really liked. The remake is I did not enjoy it, but also my brain is poisoned by anything that Chris Pratt is in nowadays. I just will not enjoy it. Mm. I'm not watching the new Mario movie because I'm just like, I'll hate this movie. I'll hate it. Don't care what people are saying. I got to see it just because Jack Black's apparently a pretty good Bowser. He's pretty good. And so is uh, Charlie Day apparently is a good Luigi, even though he's not. I believe that. Yeah. Like his voice just kind of is a Luigi voice. Also, I, 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 I love Charlie Day. I'd, 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 I'd follow him into battle. Um, <laughs> but that is where my housekeeping list stops. But you know what doesn't stop? Advertisements for goods and services, people. It's everywhere, including here, unless you subscribe to our Patreon. So I suggest maybe you do that. But in the meantime, listen to these wonderful ads that are probably uh, produced in in very high quality and not some weird thing that you're certainly not interested in. Enjoy. And we're back. By the way, guys, when we go to the ad break, when we when we pause for the edit, there, I used to sing different songs in my head. It was like the 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 final Jeopardy for a while, and then Heart of Glass because of Ryan. But ever <laughs> since we watched Prisoners of the Ghostland, it's the fucking TikTok grandfather clock song plays on loop in my head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, just just in case you're wondering about our creative process. I'm just gonna put that in an ad break slot one time. <laughs> like I'm just not gonna cut to an ad break. It's just gonna be that song for 20 seconds. Hopefully we don't get copyright struck for that, but I can't imagine why anyone would. Yeah, we'll 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 double check how much we're allowed to play in uh, fair use, uh, covered by fair use, and then I would love that. <laughs> it's like 0. 0.75 seconds. That's fine. Yeah. If also, I just do I'm it, pretty sure Kanye didn't write that song, so I think we can get away with it without a DMCA. <laughs> it's probably not owned by WB either. We might be safe. There you go. God, I hope so. I hope it's like a, a folk song that's in the public domain, globe yeah. wise. Uh, but I'm not sure. It's it's very spot on for that film, so I feel like it was written for it. Anyway, uh, now we can get into uh, what I'm very excited for, which oh, is the plot yeah. of this fucking film. And I need I need to preface before we get into this synopsis. The only way I could describe this film without spoilers to somebody is is it's an action film where i am positive in the writer's room after every scene is pitched somebody asked yeah but what could make it cooler and then somebody else in the room piped up with a what and that's if the somebody's dude gets a 14 pancake? year old boy yeah he's like what if the dude who gets pancaked by the car is on fire and everybody's like that's fucking genius we're gonna do it absolutely it's there are so many people on fire in this movie there are so many people on fire there are so many moments that are just like physically impossible but it's like (laughs) it's like a 14 year old explaining an action movie that they saw in passing as a child no it's like (laughs) a 14 year old explaining an action movie he had a dream about yes (laughs) but he's also explaining it as a run-on sentence because the action (laughs) never lapses in this movie it's like, yo, and then there's a car chase, and then, like, three of them get set on fire, and then Nick Cage comes down and just goes, like, boom, right in the face. And then, then Nick Cage kills, screen. like, six dudes while fucking a lady? <laughs> We're gonna have to rate this something higher than R, like, double R. <laughs> yeah, like, this is definitely an and-then movie. Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's, uh, honestly, it's, it's... There's no beautiful. room to stop and get a breath. Also, just as a heads up, like we're going to have a tough time getting through this because I tried to I tried to do just a quick check on what my word count was for the notes. But uh, Google Drive doesn't uh, display that easily. I can tell you it's six pages, singled space. That's Jesus. just my plot synopsis. What's a normal plot synopsis for you? Like two, three, two and a half to three. <laughs> <laughs> six pages i'm assuming that that's longer than the combined uh notes for all of grindhouse <laughs> it, pro- it probably was well because uh, the 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 notes for like 
fucking death proof is this is a Quentin Tarantino film. You know what it is. <laughs> There's a lot of talking about things that do not matter about his personal opinions. <laughs> oh, I actually can get the word count. I wrote poo 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 3500 words about this. Oh my the plot. <laughs> Fucking wow, guy. I don't think I even thought 3,500 words about this movie. I just knew it ruled. <laughs> <laughs> to be Everybody fair, strap repeat... in. This might be our first three-parter. <laughs> I do repeat that this movie fucking rules several times in my notes. So, to dive right in, we start... Every time it the... says that, though, you have to let us know. I will. I will. All right. We, we start with a voiceover talking about how for all of humanity's history... Uh, we've tried to imprison bad men, but they always flee. But no matter how fast these badass fuckers are, they can never run fast enough and they'll always be accounted for. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. But oh, by the way, while oh, it's this set in hell. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. While this voiceover is happening, uh, a fucking car looks like it jumps out of the gates of hell and then tears ass down like a nuclear blasted golden gate bridge it's god i bet so this looks cool. so fucking cool in 3d i'm a little bit pissed that i didn't see this when it first came out because i like, kind of want to buy a 3d television just to watch this fucking movie yeah right i don't think we mentioned it but this movie was shot for 3d and it's so apparent while you're watching it like <laughs> what was going to be flying out of the screen at you and it was so good not in 3d i can't imagine it in 3d it might blow your brains out. Yeah. It'll knock your socks off and blow your brains out. I'm yeah. sorry. If if they ever played this in a 3D theater anywhere in like a, a three-state radius around us, we gotta go. Oh, man. We Continental U.S., I'm there. All right. All right. <laughs> Pop, well, take me as... on a fucking plane. <laughs> put, put me in a box full of COVID. <laughs> So we we cut to what looks like like clearly bad guys. You know how you know they're bad guys. They're like kind of dirty and greasy and grimy and they're they're speeding in a truck and like like frantically like looking behind them and they're saying shit like didn't she say he was dead and uh he's going to make us pay. And uh of course <laughs> Nick Cage Milton John Milton rolls up, shoots their truck with a shotgun and then the truck slams into his car, but the truck flips over. What is, it looks like a Cadillac or a Buick. I'm not a car guy. I'll find out. They, I, it was definitely listed in the IMDb trivia. Okay. Because <laughs> it does not look like there's there's uh, physics to back up what occurs. <laughs> but it's badass. Like, again, again, the, the scene was pitched as... I mean, like, then, old cars were made out of fucking lead. If that yeah. truck was newer... <laughs> But no, like, it, again, the scene was pitched as like, yeah, the bad guys are running. The Nick Cage pulls up in front of him, shoots him with a shotgun. And somebody's else like, yeah, but you know what would be more badass? The truck then hits this old sedan <laughs> and fucking flips over it. And they're like, yeah, we're going to shoot it that way. That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> Which is how every movie should be shot. Just it, it, 100%. What would make it cooler? 100%. I wish... I wish more movies were written this way uh, because it doesn't matter. You can cover up so much that would be uh, spotted as lacking in your film. If you just did the, okay, that's a great pitch. Now punch it up so that it's super fucking cool. And that's the version we're going to shoot. Yo, imagine Moonstruck like that. Like, <laughs> yo, so he's given this monologue about his hand, but how about he's on fire? Or cuts off his other hand right there. <laughs> and then the rest of the movie is with him with two wooden hands. All right. It's a 1964 Buick Riviera. Oh, shit. My instincts were on. It was a Buick. It was a Buick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's built like a brick shit house. It's got to be a It's got to be a Buick. And I'm not a car guy. So, so one guy gets out of the wrecked truck and uh, charges Cage with a tire iron. But Cage, of course, shoots his fucking hand off with the shotgun. Uh, and this is our first taste of very bad CGI in this movie. But you know what? I know we've complained about it in the past. But if you make your movie badass enough, I'm not going to give a shit about the CGI. I'll be 
fine with it. There, there is a time and place for everything, and if your budget does not allow for the coolest fucking thing you can think of, sometimes CGI is the correct choice. Yeah, the place is here, and the time is now, motherfucker. That's <laughs> what they said. <laughs> then uh, Cage runs the guy's pockets, like steals his money. Uh, another guy tries to flee from the uh, the crashed truck at this point. And so uh, Milton shoots his fucking kneecap off. And then the last guy is stuck in the truck. And uh, when Milton approaches him, he says, uh, I'm never going to tell you where they're taking her. And Milton goes, I know, and shoots him dead immediately. <laughs> so amazing. The, the start of this movie, I was hook, line, and sinker. It's like a fucking parody of an action movie you'd see on the TV in The Simpsons. I know. And now it makes me like, want This should be to... starring McBain. Yeah, now I want I want this director-writer team to make a McBain movie. Oh my god, yes. Oh. A, live, a, a live action live action McBain and they have to do the bad Schwarzenegger accent. They do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Give it to Christian um, Bale. He'll fucking run with it. Mendoza! <laughs> so Milton, Milton goes to interrogate kneecap guy. Tire iron guy uh, hops up and tries to charge him again, but gets shot dead. <laughs> and uh, kneecaps uh, tells Milton that they, they took her to Stillwater, uh, but she's dead as soon as there's a full moon and hell will walk the earth. And uh, Milton goes, hell already walks the earth. And uh, tell him I'm coming to get her. And of course, at this point, he walks away from the guy he just told to deliver a message for him and shoots. Right. Hold on. I got to double check my notes. Yeah. Shoots. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he shoots the dude dead. No, yeah. no. No, she's just hand shoots. off. No, even better. Even better. He shoots a puddle of gas that is spilled from the wreck, which races back and blows up everything behind him as he's walking title card drive to see angry. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking good it's so fucking good yeah this this movie fucking rules that's the first <laughs> time it appears in my notes right after the title card <laughs> i'm i'm gonna keep a tab as to how many times this it's, movie rules it's a lot of times so <laughs> from here we cut to a diner where piper and Norma Jean are working as waitresses. And Piper is telling Norma Jean about how she got her boyfriend to propose to her by cutting him off from sex. And this conversation is hilarious because she's like, that's crazy. Like, how long did it take? And she was like, two days. But that's like a million years for really horny people. <laughs> he, the specific line is that's a million years in horny fucker time. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that really struck out for me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Norma Jean goes to wait on Milton, who is who is occupying a little corner booth. And uh, Norma Jean is very obviously into Milton immediately. By the way, that's a running theme in this film. Almost everybody wants to fuck Milton, except for Piper, sort of. Well, I mean, um, look, he in this movie, he looks like a hotter version of the dude from Nickelback. Yeah, what's with his, what's going on with his like bleach blonde hair too? <laughs> I love it. There's not there's not it's a phenomenal. decision made in this film that I'm going to quibble with. <laughs> You're right. Every choice was the correct one. <laughs> oh yeah, a hundred percent. So so Milton asked Norma Jean about Stillwater and if she's heard of a place called Stillwater in like Texas or something like that. And uh, Norma Jean informs him that Stillwater is in Louisiana and it's not a small town. It's uh, a former prison that closed down. Uh, but also while she's flirting with him, she mentions that it's a full moon tonight. But Milton corrects her that it's a full moon in two days establishing a timeline for the movie that they immediately stop giving a fuck about. And I did too. So unlike my yeah, this is anti next. Movie, yeah. Unlike my least favorite movie, I did not bother trying to place myself in time in this movie because cool shit was happening too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Give us some cool shit and 100%. we will give you the shit. We will give you a we lot of leeway. 
where toddlers in this movie jangled the keys oh, at the right fucking time. I hope you're taking notes, everybody involved in the making of Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is how you make a good time-based movie. So, so uh, Norma Jean is trying really hard. Like, to, to clarify, Milton ordered just a black coffee with sugar. And like Norma Jean drops off the coffee. She's flirting with him again. They have like a really weird, inappropriate like makeout right in front of the booth. And then he pulls away and <laughs> takes his coffee, takes a sip of it. And he said, I said with sugar and shoves her away from him before <laughs> dumping a shit ton of sugar in his coffee. It's I'm I'm telling you, remember what we said at the top of the <laughs> explanation of the plot Yeah, but she's synopsis? into it. She's into being degraded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So she's just like, give me more daddy cage. <laughs> so by the way, Jack McGee, this is where fat Lou is like the owner or manager, at least of the diner. And he's a real weird, creepy piece of shit. But while Norma Jean is, is, is trying to get it in with Milton Piper is waiting on a, a family that uh, seems to be like trying to order the cheapest shit on the menu. You can tell also, uh, call out to them for relatively effective storytelling that didn't seem super ham-fisted like you pick up on the fact that you know this is a treat for them and they don't have a lot of money and so uh piper drops off on the house like muffins some kind of some kind of muffins and fat lou gives her shit about it and he's like they've got to pay for it and she's like you're just gonna throw them out and then he goes if they're not gonna pay you're gonna pay and does some lecherous shit which in response, Piper grabs him by the nuts and is like, fuck you, I quit. <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this movie rules. This movie it does, does roll. <laughs> so Piper leaves the diner and goes out to her uh, car, which is a, a charger, which Milton had been eyeing up like earlier in the scene. And uh, her she has vanity plates on it and they're truncated drive angry. That's her. That's her vanity plates. This is my second LOL. This movie fucking rules <laughs> <laughs> notes. We got two. We're up to two. <laughs> yeah. So, but Piper is singing along to a. I I don't know the song, Ryan. I'm gonna rely on you for this. I put oh, like notes. none of the music in this is like I did not recognize a single thing. It's all like bad butt rock and like <laughs> pop country <laughs> and. Uh, the, the fucking ending theme is apparently by one of Nick Cage's sons. I thought the ending theme was a Tenacious D song. No, no, no. You're thinking about before the credits. The, yes. the actual credits song with the uh, the little bit of like not clean uh, vocals where it's a little okay, scream yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's, okay. that's Cage's son. And the name of the song is just Drive Angry. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> this movie rules. Oh, you got to um, he- you. I, so I just looked up like the track listing for the soundtrack. You have a song by this band Trooper called Raise a Little Hell. That's when he kills everybody and blows up their car. Uh, this song, I'm just going to keep this up at this point, is Good called idea. Fuck the Pain Away by Peaches. Hey, oh, it. shit, I did know this one. Okay, this is the one song that I actually recognized. Because it's, it's been what used I in a bunch of other random stuff. Because the chorus is just Fuck the Pain Away. Fuck the Pain Away. <laughs> yeah. So this is I'm, what I'm just going to... Like every time something comes up, I'm just gonna say what well, I'm just gonna fucking say what it is. All right, fair. Yeah, like that, that is legitimately cute. the one song I recognized in this whole movie, and I completely forgot it. Ex- oh, wait a minute. There. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I- I'm gonna see if I can do this. Oh yeah, we're doing this. Getting wait, copyright stricken. Oh yeah, right. Copyrights can't do that shit. Yeah, Fuck. Can't do yeah, that. I was gonna, say, I was gonna start yeah. playing about to play songs. copyrighted music. We're just gonna have to nah. bleep it. Sadly, uh, it is not in the cards. But unfortunately, while Piper is driving and singing along, her car overheats uh, and she has to pull over. Milton walks up very quickly and way too close out of nowhere (laughs) as a stranger. It may be the funniest fucking thing that happens in the film. And there's a lot of contenders. Oh, I was going to say, I don't know if it's the funniest. There's so many, but if you doubt me on this, go back and watch that scene. He walks up out of like the woods it's very fast <laughs> and very close to a woman stranded with car trouble it is like the opposite of what you're supposed to do to appear non-threatening <laughs> yeah so yeah he walks up super weirdly and says he can fix the engine issue but only if she gives him a ride 
And she agrees to take him as far as a truck stop. And then he goes, okay, and leans in and just gives the radiator cap like a quarter turn and shuts the hood. And he's like, all right, we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is pretty fucking funny. It is. It's it's funny. And then they immediately, this movie does one, two combos and cool shit and funny shit relatively often. The follow up, uh, the hook after the jab is we cut to Fitchner, the accountant, just walking through the woods in like a full like three piece suit and then coming out of the woods, arriving at the diner. Norm- so my exact reaction was like, yo, this dude's in this fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like I did, did not know his name, could not recall what he has ever been in, but he's just one of those dudes. You're just like, yo, this is going to be good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so, he's, he's in a shit ton of good movies. He's in Armageddon. Yeah. So so Norma Jean is struggling with, a, like, an overstuffed trash bag. And she's trying to get into the dumpster as Fat Lou is just walking to his car. Also, by the way, this is, like, gotta be maybe 20 minutes after everybody left the diner originally. And they look like they're going home for the fucking day, which makes zero sense. But who cares? Because this movie whips ass. <laughs> yeah they didn't even That's try to great. shoot day for night or anything no nope not at all so the accountant helps norma jean throw the trash away and then addresses fat lou as fat fuck and says says he's looking for somebody and then apparently catches a, a whiff like there's there's some clear supernatural shit about the accountant character if you could believe that um you don't say yeah but also, I got to throw in this interaction with, like, Fat Lou, because he's like, what did you call me? He's like, I called you Fat Fuck. Would you rather me call you Dead Fat Fuck? <laughs> Which is just <laughs> it's pretty good. perfect. <laughs> so at this point, our character introduces himself as the account to both of these. And Norma Jean, who is just still feeling uh, the regret of not bagging Milton, is flirtatiously indicating which way Milton walked off. Because, uh, not going to lie, the, the accountant establishes himself as a pretty intriguing individual uh, right away. And uh, I'm not even going to do a bit here because I respect this film too much. Here's another ad break, okay? I'm not going to suggest that something happened in the movie that led into the ads. Fuck that. We're going to do this for real. So listen to these ads, fast forward through them, get back to it so we can tell you what happens in this cool movie. All right, enough of that shit. We got to talk about this fucking movie that whips so much ass. (laughs) So I mean, it's apparently Axl Rose's favorite Nick Cage movie. Hell yeah, it is. Just his man of good taste. Not his just favorite movie of all time. It might be his favorite movie of all time. Well, well, no, no, he's spoken to Axl recently. (laughs) Well, no, his his favorite movie of all time. Very few people know this. Is uh, Birth of a Nation. That tracks. <laughs> that does track. <laughs> this is a close oh, second. Not enough N words in this movie. Not for Axel Rose. Uh, please so. don't sue us, you fat fuck. <laughs> also, fuck I mean, you. it's not like we're lying. He definitely says the N word in one in a million, a song that sucks. <laughs> there you go. Come at us. No, don't sue us. Yeah, don't don't sue us, but fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> write us write us a hate email. We'll yeah. publish it. It's That'd fine. be so fucking cool. Oh, I would frame that shit. <laughs> I, you have to. You have to. Actually, you I, know actually, what? I would, what's, I would bring what's it our to email event, address? Event Hang on, get them to sign it. <laughs> Hang on, I would have that fucking it? engraved into a stone. All right, I would listen here, like Axel Rose. If you if you're googling yourself, I will tag your name in this podcast. <laughs> Our our Gmail is Nick Cage Fight Podcast at gmail.com. Write to us. Tell us how much we suck in our woke or I don't know. I don't know what more, people 50, are saying. And no. while we got your ear, Chinese democracy sucked shit and was not worth the wait. Yeah. Also, if we get fifty more if we get fifty more patrons from the day we get that uh hate email, if we get that hate email, all three of us will get it tattooed on our bodies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, okay. it, look, listen, <laughs> you may not have to wait for mine. If we get a hate email from Axel Rose, I, I'll get that tattooed on my body immediately. 
<laughs> full full back piece. It's gonna be like one of those like badass action movie ones, but it's just Axel Rose telling us how much he hates us. Oh shit, the font's gonna have to be small on mine. I already have some real estate taken up back there. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna get that and then uh the note from the Jersey Shore right next to each other. <laughs> oh god. We're having too much fun with rabbit trails on this one. This might end up a three parter because <laughs> At this point, we are not plot. 20 minutes into this film. No, we're like no. fucking 10 minutes in. All of this <laughs> shit happened in 10 minutes. But Milton gets out of Piper's car. They've arrived somewhere and he thanks her for the ride. He walks off and Piper goes inside of her uh, apartment house, wherever, where her fiance is straight up fucking some other lady. Uh, and the um, song here is Laser Love by T Rex. There you go. Really? I should have recognized that one, too. I love T-Rex. Mark Boland's my man. <laughs> so Piper grabs this lady by the hair, drags her outside butt naked, and knocks her ass out. Which, by the way, there's a random dude just walking by at this point who pulls out a, a fucking flip phone and takes a picture of her, the knocked out lady. <laughs> Multiple um, pictures. <laughs> Milton, meanwhile, is in like a phone booth or something, and he pulls like this smoking suitcase out of his backpack, and inside is some kind of hell shotgun. It or looks minigun. like one of those uh the the fucking fake vampire hunter kits that started cropping up around the 1890s that were no, supposed to be is... antiques at that time. No, it's like this it's the is, same kind this... of case. It's 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 cooler than that because it is not cooler just, than like, that. Old like this is old like real vampire hunters use. This is just like a weird maybe slightly biological material inside the case and this uh, insane, weird video game ass looking gun. It looks like something out of Quake, straight yeah, up. A hundred percent. For a very specific type of nerd, uh, it's the repeating handgun from uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Mm, yes. There you go. Yes, yes. It looks awesome. <laughs> And then we go back to Piper, who is leaving her fiance, and she's gonna take his. She's gonna take the car, and he's like, "That's my car." She's like, "I fucking pay for it because you're a deadbeat." And then shit gets a little bit dark because she starts like punching him, and he punches her back. And then she gets up and spits on him, and he backhands her. And then he goes to hit her uh, a lot worse. But then Milton comes up. And beats the shit out of him, knocks him against the house. He falls down, and then the the fucking window unit air conditioner falls on his head. He does not die at this point, just to be clear. But the air conditioner falling out on his head was kind of cool. And an obvious conclusion, if you are paying attention to the themes in this film at all at this point, not 10 minutes in. So at this point, we cut to Piper is asleep in the backseat of the Charger, and Milton is driving and looking up at the moon. And we get a strange series of flashbacks. They seem like flashbacks. We learn that's not exactly what's happening, but kind of what is, is what's happening. And there's a weird preacher guy, clearly a cult. There's definitely some Jim Jones inspiration taken both at this point in the film and later in the film when they continue to develop the character. But he, he he's, we get snippets of, of his sermons, I guess, talking about the need for darkness and then we get a scene where a lady is clearly just given birth. This is one of the cultists. And he goes and like him and his goons like take the baby from her. And then it looks like he tries to force her to 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 give him oral sex. And she she bites him in the dick. And then in retaliation, he cuts her throat with a straight razor. At this I point, we cut back to the car. Piper wakes up and Milton asks her if it's OK if they go to Louisiana and introduces himself as, as John Milton. Piper acquiesces, but says uh, if he tries to kill her and dump her body in the woods, she's going to cut his balls off, I think is the exact threat. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty close, if not verbatim. And yeah. and I think she says, if you try to kill me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they pull into the parking lot of a place called Bull by the Balls with a very appropriate like neon sign in the front <laughs> love a good neon sign what and we that? get our we, I love we a get good our, neon sign yeah me too we get our fourth music break uh this song when they're walking into the bar is sandman by robin i don't know how to say this last name permsey no idea doesn't matter it's butt, <laughs> it's butt rock 
<laughs> and like I'm just kind of realizing that like god damn all all four of the main characters in this film are so well written I agree like you get everybody's motivation you get everybody's backstory and they do it in an hour 45 yeah it's pretty textbook it like no notes honestly <laughs> yeah that's what I, that that was one of the weirdest things to me because this is is clearly it's not what somebody like a, a, a like a cinephile would say like oh this is a good movie but it's a fucking good movie it, it this has this movie has almost no fat on it whatsoever yeah. it does exactly what it meant to do from start to finish which is fucking impressive and it like it, it tricks you into knowing about these characters with all of the cool shit yeah honestly that's one of the reasons why i liked the portrayal of Piper's character so much because you get immediately her reaction to almost everything is I'm going to fucking fight that. Yeah. Every action taken by a character informs that character's motivations, which is yeah. just, just smart storytelling. Yeah. Really, really masterfully done for, for such a, for, for you, from the writer of Jason X, you will not expect how tightly this story is told it feels absurd even saying that but just fucking watch it if you don't believe us if this description does not do it justice which i'll tell you it's not gonna we can't <laughs> you gotta see this shit <laughs> so they walk into this establishment and the the proprietor recognizes milton and again we get uh, a call back to uh, oh, I, I thought you were dead. He's like, I get that a lot or something along those lines. So clearly uh, they have some kind of history. And when they sit at a table, Piper asks about this. And Milton says, uh, again, uh, loosely uh, quoting, he said in another life, he was a trucker in these parts. And this is another point in my notes because a waitress comes over and I say, everybody but Piper seems to want to fuck Milton in this film including the accountant based yes. on some of those furtive glances that they trade dude the sexual oh, yeah. tension is <laughs> pretty fun. you can cut it with a butter knife man I, no. <laughs> but uh piper excuses herself well all right real quick first of all because this is an important part they get carded uh at the table when they go to order beers drinks right and milton's license is expired in fact the waitress says it's not just expired this is a fucking antique and he goes, I'll just have coffee. Piper excuses herself after they've already ordered. Uh, of course, the waitress is into Milton enough. She's like, ah, no, it's fine. I'll make an exception. Just don't tell on me. Uh -huh. And Piper goes off to, she's clearly making eyes at one of the uh, the barbacks or bartenders and says she'll meet uh, Milton at dawn. So one other element that, that we didn't mention because it really didn't factor into the diner scene but another gentleman enters the bar at this point. He's got a weird leather jacket, like a leather driving jacket or motorcycle jacket. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it, but he walks into Bull by the Balls, and this is where I noticed, yes, he had also walked into the diner earlier. There's a brief camera shot of him, but then he doesn't do anything in the diner scene. So it is significant, though. So we cut away from Bull by the Balls to Piper's now ex fiance's house uh and the accountant uh has just rolled up and so uh the accountant asks the ex-fiance where milton went the fiance is like i i called the cops because you know my fiance stole my car why are you asking me these questions about this guy who assaulted me and the accountant gets fed up and like just fucking superhero throws him into the wall fiance goes to fight back with a baseball bat which the accountant dodges snaps and uses one of the broken ends to pin the fiance up against the wall, like off of his feet. Yeah, through the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty brutal. All bad CGI, but still pretty brutal. But again, the bad CGI isn't that bad within the context of the movie. It all yeah. plays. Yeah. I did not have a problem with this. And I feel like my, my distaste for poorly utilized bad CGI has been made clear you know, from our, our past episodes, this one, it doesn't bother me, which yep. shows you just got to tell a good story, man. That's all I need. That's all I want. And if you do it in the coolest fucking way possible, bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> just set more dudes on fire in your movies. That's Hell all yeah. I'm saying. 
Also, those all looked like practical effects in this film, which was kind of mind blowing. I mean, those uh, the, the fireproof suits are not that expensive. It, it might have actually been. Still, I love their commitment because they yeah. could have just thrown some some shitty flickering CGI fire. On and they're like some no, Ghost Rider people. shit. You know what? This is the best Ghost Rider movie. It is. <laughs> it is. But yeah, you, I, I you like know what would have made thought. Titanic better? People on fire. Yes. <laughs> yes. Any 100%. James Cameron movie, actually. <laughs> that some people on fire set some well, of them no, blue not, not terminator 2 enough dudes are on fire in that movie yeah no, yeah no, no 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 that's more. that's fine <laughs> no, i don't know it's got a pretty high density of dudes on fire more but like set set some of them blue aliens on fire i care way more now <laughs> i won't <laughs> i just i want a movie called people on fire and it's just a bunch of practice that's it 90 minutes practical effects people on fire and just screaming that's it's it just i'd a, watch every it's just second. the fucking uh simpsons uh springfield film festival joke with uh hans mole man getting hit in the balls with uh football <laughs> <laughs> oh shit we are running out of time so i'm gonna i'm gonna try and finish out this scene at least yeah yeah we got like five minutes left on the yeah, clock i know so the the accountant asks a couple more questions and then uh finishes the job he started with the fiance by whipping the other end of the broken bat directly through the fiance's face. Like, and this is one of those and in three like, D it would have been cool because it's coming yes, directly at the camera. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's the only reason you would frame a shot like that is if you're expecting to have that three D effect pop out of the screen. This is the first time in the movie where I was like, oh this. This wasn't just shot for 3D. This was originally constructed as a movie for 3D to show it off. You want to hear the funniest thing from my perspective? I did not even consider that until both of you told me it. I was just like, City sh- shitty CGI? I don't care. This is awesome. Apparently, one of the reasons why Cage signed on to it was because he was interested in uh, jumping in on the ground floor of the burgeoning 3D movie scene. Yeah, so the the movie poster is actually, like, if you look at the movie title, it looks like it's called Drive Angry Shot in 3D. Yeah, it does. Yeah, nope. Didn't matter to me at all. Did not detract. I didn't go... Oh, okay. it did not this detract explains... not at all <laughs> yeah i didn't go oh this explains this excuses nope i was like this movie is fucking fine <laughs> watching <laughs> it on my computer screen no 3d whatsoever <laughs> i didn't even think about it didn't even think about it you don't need to this movie fucking rules <laughs> oh so this also this part cracks me up so the accountant walks out right after murdering the fiance and a cop car pulls up and two cops get out I'm going to make everybody I know watch this movie. Yeah, I'm going to watch it again this week. Usually I watch these uh, with a buddy of mine, (laughs) but he's out of the state this week. And I was like, oh, shit, he's got to see this one. (laughs) So good. I'm sorry. Continue. Cops outside. Yeah. And so they're like, we're looking for so-and-so. And he's like, oh, he's inside. So one of the cops goes inside and he just starts chatting. The account just starts chatting with the other one. But one cop goes inside and sees a murdered man like pinned. (laughs) To the wall with two pieces of a broken baseball bat just jammed through him. Like, a physical impossibility that this man ended up this way without some sort of crazy supernatural shit going on. So, of course, he comes out with his gun up. The other cop pulls his gun on the accountant. And the accountant goes, hold on a minute, and flips a coin into the air. And this is where I should have. I was too wrapped up in how fucking awesome the movie was because we get an overhead shot. The coin flips up like obvious CGI, like right at your face. And it comes down like, what's going to happen? Like, I'm ready for anything at this point. (laughs) And the accountant catches the coin and it turns into just an FBI badge. And he's like, yeah, I'm from the FBI. And you and you got to come with me to stop this guy. He's killed before. He'll kill again. And when we find him, we had a shoot to kill. And they're like, that's not protocol. And he's like, if you follow protocol, he'll kill you. And the cops are like, by the way, I'm describing this in exactly as much time as it took to occur in the movie. And the cops are like, all right, you got it. (laughs) We're not going to call back or ask our bosses if this is cool. We're going to come with you and shoot this dude. And and God damn it. I I think we have to call it there because if I keep talking about this movie, we're just just going to gush about it. Yeah. I'm I don't not. think I'm ever going to stop talking about this movie. We are 23 minutes into the movie, just so everybody listening can get a sense as to where we are at. I mean, there's a couple action scenes I think we can truncate pretty efficiently, but like... But we're not gonna. We're not, we're not gonna. gonna. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. But Bef- before we end, I just want to tell you, what did I say? My word count was around thirty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I got through nine hundred and eighty of them. Hey, that's not a bad clip in episode one. <laughs> in episode one, yeah, of three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listeners, it's, just so you know, we we record these on a weekday night. Uh, Josh is going to hate everything tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, I have to go to work in the morning. <laughs> See, I, I have off. I could you know just how sleep I'm going to get there, though? I'm going to drive angry. <laughs> you drive angry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and right, you, well, you, dear listener, cannot drive angry while listening to us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nick Cage Fight. Every episode is up with no ads for three dollars a month i know that we like make jokes like oh the patreon like you know 10 bucks a month we'll watch the wrestler uh we actually are going to like do this stuff now like we've we already are... had a conversation that like we have to kind of we are do currently this. trying to schedule it coming soon i know i've said that before but i mean it this time yeah and this time also... we're actually serious we're not we're not gaslighting you we promise <laughs> also like i i <laughs> Uh, I may not have, have have sold the Patreon um, hard enough in the past, but I will say for if for this episode alone, the ads are definitely detracting from your experience of us describing this. If just for this one, sign up to listen to this one without stupid ads interrupting it, and then buy this movie and watch it a hundred times. Show it to your family. <laughs> That's show it but, to your kids. Yeah, no, show it to yeah, everyone. Show it to grandma. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you want your kids to be the coolest kids you've ever met, show them this movie as soon as possible. Show them this and Bad Lieutenant. Yeah. It'll be set for life. Both Bad Lieutenants. And it's going to create extremely unrealistic expectations about the standards of filmmaking, but they're going to be cool fucking kids. <laughs> they may get the addicted coolest. to heroin. <laughs> um, while you're waiting for our next episode, but likely with bated breath, if we've done this movie any justice whatsoever, you can follow us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, uh, home of Ron DeSantis's presidential campaign announcement uh, at cagefight underscore pod. Yo, my uh, favorite ahead, shit about that was <laughs> when Elon <laughs> made the wrong person a co-host and he just ended it. <laughs> <laughs> he just ended the live stream. I'm sorry. And again, this is not an endorsement of the man. This is a factual statement about his response to it. But Trump just posted a picture of the space which showed DeSantis's picture and name, Musk's picture and name. And the other people in the top two rows of this included Adolf Hitler and Satan. <laughs> I, sw- I swear to God. Man. Yo, the See king that? is back. The king of social media Jesus is Christ. fucking back. Look, Say what you will about the man. He can post. I, 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 the, the man can ship post. poster president. 100%. <laughs> All other criticism is entirely valid. But don't say the man can't post. Man can post. The man can post. Yeah, fuck it. That's going to do it for us. <laughs> Come back next time when I'm going to try. I'm I'm not going to rush through this movie. I promise you, listener, we are going to cover every element of this story, all the nooks and crannies, and we will do that in part two. And Thanks if it goes three in. episodes, like I'll post episode one and two on the same day. Yeah, whatever, whatever we need to do, we just need to supersize the, the second part. We're going to get through this. We're going to do this movie justice because it fucking deserves it. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, listener, we appreciate you.